Hey, welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. It's still dark. Yeah, it's the the uh, time thing. I'm still stuck in, uh, at the moment, I am in one of the states that does daylight savings time, so the standard time, so it's the, I don't know, whatever. It's also pretty far north. It's like 40 north, so it's winter time. There's not a lot of sunlight, so it's still dark. Did you know that there were several states, um, this is, goes back to the Obama administration, that voted to rate, standardize their time? Basically, they were going to never come off daylight savings time, because daylight savings time actually makes the most sense for most of the time zones, because it's kind of arbitrary and doesn't really make sense. Um, California is one of them, Nevada is one of them. A whole bunch of the western states especially said, no, we're just going to stay. We're not going to ever fall back or spring forward. It kills people, it disturbs people, it's bad for your mental and physical health, and we're not going to do it. And for whatever reason, I still don't understand exactly how this worked, but it was definitely the Obama administration, and they had very specific, it was very specifically political, said, no, you can't do that. Um, that's the kind of centralized federal shit that I just don't get, okay? I don't, I don't understand why, why the... I don't understand why we need that level of, of authority in the federal government, you know. So I don't do it. I just, I stay on Mountain Standard Time, um, what people out here call Arizona Time, all the time. And screw it, you know. I have to, I have to make the mental adjustment as I drive through different states about what, what time it is for them. But, you know, you have to do that if you go to... New Mexico or Missouri or Texas or Oklahoma anyway, so what difference does it make if I do it for an extra couple weeks while I'm at a house that I live at, you know? Um, whatever. Really don't care. It's really, it's stupid, and I'm not going to give myself a heart attack over somebody else's stupid clock. Ooh. Ha. Anyway, so it's still dark. And apparently I'm still allowed on the internet. Does that mean I'm not a, a terrorist yet? Where do we go from here? I don't know. But I do know that uh, as you watch the channel, this is, this is one of those time-bound videos. So this is a plans for the week video, okay? I'm going to be looking at some more property purchases. Now, here's the deal. Uh, full disclosure, I have, I'm making payments on, a cheap piece of land down on the northern Arizona Strip in, in an undisclosed location because it's, uh, come on, it, everything's got to be undisclosed at this point. Um, and it was a really good decision. So it's a fairly remote piece, and it's not where I want to build my stuff right now. It's not necessarily something I don't want to build on. Um, and it's there, and it's available. It's actually perfectly chosen for certain things that I want to do, okay? There is an aquifer accessible. Um, it's a pretty deep and expensive well, but it's available. Like, it, it should be doable for water haulage which is which is a common thing especially at first it it is a sloped property so um the advantage with that and we're going to talk about water for a minute here is that if you have an elevation change on your property you have water pressure thanks to the force of gravity so if you if you've got about um i think 30 feet, 20 or 30 feet. I gotta, I gotta go look it up for you guys. You'll get what close to house pressure. Okay, you'll get a reasonable amount of pressure. If you've only got three feet of drop, you'll, you're gonna get a kind of a trickle. Okay, the amount of drop you have affects the water pressure that you're gonna have. Of course, pipe sizes and everything matters too, uh, as well as takes. <laughs> excuse me, tank sizes. But the, the main core here, the, the element that I want to get at right now is that if you have an elevation change and you can get your tanks higher, significantly higher, 
than your your faucets, your use, then you have free water pressure, okay? If you have to do that by building a tower, then you have to get the water into the tower. That's not necessarily a problem, okay? It's a very simple, simple piece of engineering. You can do it with a slow solar pump, low flow pumps. There's all sorts of ways to do it. Um, you can use a bucket and a ladder, honestly. It depends on what you're, what you're set up for and what, you're, what you want to do. But if you have that natural elevation change, you're in much better shape to just drive up, fill your water from above into the tanks and then have water pressure down to your house or bathroom or whatever. Which brings up, of course, bathrooms, which is another thing that we need to talk about. But this remote property here, um, it's not super expensive. And this is one of the things where if you're doing land purchases in an area, finding something that's, that's a reputable dealer. This is the biggest thing that I got out of this, is I got a reputable broker, right? I shopped around a little bit, talked to some people, and I, I wrote this contract with this guy, and it's fantastic. It's a fantastic guy, all right? He, his, his, everything about his business is great. And uh, that's, I think that's the key, the, the key benefit there, aside from actually having land. Now, it's land that I have a real mortgage contract on, so it's, uh, that makes a difference, okay? It's a real mortgage contract, not a rent-to-own scam. This, this is important. You gotta look at these things when you're doing land purchases. You know, try to figure out how does that work. You know, ask a real estate agent or a lawyer or someone online. Be like, D be careful when you ask online because people give you shit answers for be based on their prejudices. You need to ask a professional who kn who knows the business. You know, what kind of contract are you looking at, and how enforceable is it, and how does it work? But here's the thing: I'm making payments on this. I'm making very low payments. It doesn't affect my my. Uh, lifestyle at all you know this is the it's the kind of thing where you're like hey pay a hundred dollars a month okay it's not quite 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 that but it's the it's in that range for a couple of years and you own the land okay the interest rate is really high but the payments are really low and the get the the, the fees and everything are really low you know i'm dealing with a realtor right now in uh another location who's you know there's there's several two to five acre plots that are three to four thousand dollars and this is some of them are foreclosures some of them are just odd because they have a wash through running diagonally through the middle of a fairly small lot and you can mess with that the county that that's in you can move you can manage the wash but it has to leave enter and leave the property at the same point okay there's just it's a wash but you can manage it while it's when it's once it's in there, and it's a little bit of concrete work, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, but their minimum fees for handling the sale are fifteen hundred dollars, and that's kind of on the crazy side, you know. So Blue Skies Land um, down in Arizona, you know, okay, yes, you're doing an owner finance with a real contract, and the interest rate is is a flat ten percent. Ten percent is outrageous. However total fees for doing all the paperwork and everything were $300. So balance this out a little bit, okay? And it's not completely bad and there's no prepayment penalties. You know, so if if I if I decide next month that I'm bored and I just want to drop $2000 and be done with it, then fine. I'm, I'm that's I can do that. There's no I don't have to pay the interest, no prepayment penalty. So it's cool. Um, the main advantage to having this is that it gives me it gives me a little bit more of a tie and a way to explore the area. It is actually a place you can just throw a tent on and camp on. That's cool. You know, you there's there's all you, often there's some restrictions about that, but it's mine. I can park on it, and sleep in the back of the truck. I can't do that for six months without a septic tank. There's there's stuff going on there. But it does give me a base to explore. It gives me a way to look at at other options. It gives me a way to talk to people. When I go down to the, to the diner in one of the towns, like if I if I go to Chloride and hang out with some people, or if I go to Dolan Springs or whatever I'm doing, right? It gives me a place I can be like, I got a lot over here. I was looking at some other stuff, something a little bit bigger, and people will talk to you more. 
you'll get more information. You'll get a better feel for the area. Also, you 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 take a lot of your stress off because you've got it. If you if you if the world ends and you have to pack up everything you can into two vehicles for the family and get out there tomorrow, you got it. You're there. You're done. It takes all of your stress for that part of the prepper exercise, the prepper game, out of it. So it's not, and it, you know, it, it's land. With some exceptions in due diligence and reasonable purchasing, like finding out if you can manage your wash in the county you're in, because that's, you know, um, with, with a little bit of due diligence, land never goes down in value. It's something you can hang on to, you know? There's a lot of stuff out here that was, that was nothing 20 years ago. 20 years is not what you're planning for, but hey, you know, there, it's very possible without a lot of super brain work to find a $5,000 piece of land right now that you can make payments on that in 20 years is going to be worth $80,000. It doesn't matter. It's not supposed to be like, I'm investing for my retirement or something. It's just, you're not going to lose out on it, okay? You're not losing an opportunity. That $100 a month is, what are you going to do? Start take up a habit of smoking and buy four packs of cigarettes. I don't even know what they cost now. It's like $10 a pack. So maybe 10 packs of cigarettes. Okay. Um, a hundred bucks a month, 200 bucks a month. Just deal with it. Cut back on your cell phone. Cut back on your McDonald's. I don't know, whatever it is. Right. I'm sitting here with my $1 coffee from that particular place. But, um, nature of the, the hours that people are keeping right now. It's the only thing open at four in the morning. So get, don't, don't stress yourself out, but maybe think about getting that first smaller, not quite ideal, looks like an interesting area piece and go from there. All right. Um, you know, start figuring. It gives you it gives you a little bit more ability. If you go spend a weekend there, if you go, you know, pile some rocks on the on the corner markers, right? That uh, that's what we've done. We've put some we've put some uh, took some T posts down, measured out the found the corner markers, the the property markers. You know, pounded some stakes in, started piling some rocks. Just little nothing major a couple hours of work here and there but it gives you a feel for what you're looking at like how is it going to be to walk on the property you know how how ready am i to move enough rocks to, to build a wall all the the little stuff you know get out there get a feel for it. get a feel for being outside in your area um you know, what, what kind of things are you, how are you going to adapt to the wind? A lot of people are not adapted to windy areas. I've been living in windy areas for a very long time. Um, many windy areas. And it's kind of annoying at times. Like, it's it's really nice when you get to a, a, a one of those environments where a breeze in the wind is, in the trees is like five miles an hour. And you're like, wow, that's kind of cool. Because out here it's like 15 half the time, right? Um... How's the wind going to be? How's, how's the summer? How's the winter? You know, you, you start to get a feel for it. You can't get out on the land until you get out on the land. And then you can look at the region around and try to find something better. Look at the road system. Explore the road system. Figure out how are you going to get to something better. Because better and affordable probably means more remote. This is, this is what you're looking at. Get that little first piece of land and don't stress it, okay? Don't stress it. You can always sell it later. Stay sideways, and uh, I'll come back at you with some bathroom thoughts in a few minutes.